Spots for Art Free TV. And we're coming to you today from Fox Music House in South Carolina, the Charleston, South Carolina. We're here with an amazing uh, man to talk to him about some things that, uh, that are important and that, that are, uh, uh, have value to it. So, um, with no further ado, because I want to deep dive right into this, I want to introduce you guys and let him tell you about him. Is Mr. Charles Mel. Mr. Charles Mel, how you doing, sir? Good man. Good, awesome. good. Glad to be with you. Awesome. So, for people who don't know in the world and around this area, please explain to them who Charles Mel is. Gotcha, gotcha. Hey, everybody. Uh, Charles Miller. Uh, so, uh, here at Fox Music House, I am the marketing director here at Fox Music House. Um, wear a lot of different hats here. Uh, but that's one of my main responsibilities here. Um, and in that responsibility, connecting um, the community. Um, artists uh, and venues and uh, other other different partners uh, with each other um, and kind of promoting uh, music um, in all of its forms um, throughout the community um, and different forms of presentation um, whether it's through Fox Music House or whether through some other entities as well um, and I really enjoy doing that and doing that for five years here and uh, we've really seen things really grow um, in such a great way uh, not just from a uh, folks, uh, more folks getting into music, but just um, how the outreach of music is uh, in our community and beyond. So right now, y'all, like I said, we have three topics. We're going to jump right now to them. We're going to deep dive into them. They're very important. Uh, so here we go. First one is... The NAM Foundation. So for you guys who don't know about the NAM Foundation, this is going to blow your mind. It <laughs> blew my mind. So sit back, hold on, tighten the seatbelt up. Let's go. Fantastic. NAM Foundation. So just kind of as a, a set the stage, uh, Fox Music House, uh, the, uh, the owners of Fox Music House and uh, their predecessors, uh, as a fourth generation owned uh, music retailer here in South Carolina, was founded in 1928 right here in Charleston. Uh, and uh, the NAM Foundation, which is the National um, Association of music merchants. So that pretty much includes all of the manufacturers, uh, distributors, uh, artists, I mean, you name it, everything that's in, considered in the world, music and audio and video per se, um, all of those folks uh, are a part of that uh, governing body, the NAM organization. Uh, Fox Music House, uh, the founders of Fox Music House were one of the uh, founders and sat on various boards for the NAM organization. Um, every year uh, through NAM, the NAM Foundation, which uh, reaches out and helps uh, communities, uh, colleges, universities, uh, K-12, uh, public institutions as well as private institutions, uh, kind of spread the word about music um, in all, all its various forms uh, and really kind of engaging uh, partners into bringing music and training kids and other communities, um, and even uh, dealing with uh, a lot of different other subjects, even outside of just um, uh, training kids in music, but also uh, through um, adult learning uh, and uh, various forms of music therapy as well, which has become very big. Uh, one of the big things with the NAM Foundation that has come about is the Make Music Day uh, that they help out with. Uh, Make Music Day was founded uh, back in 1982. Uh, in France, uh, and it was originally called Fête de la Musique, uh, which which means you know Day of Music um, in French, uh, and it really has grown to over 1,000 cities um, in over 120 countries, celebrated around the world every year on June 21st. Um, it's great, great, uh, great idea, and the concept behind it is um, even if you don't have a music instrument. The ability for just anybody to make music in any way, shape, or form um, is, you know, one of the most beautiful things that you'll ever see. Uh, so, you know, in different cities all around the world, uh, including even Charleston, and we've been a participant with Make Music Day for the last uh, three or four years here. Um, you will find in various different cities and hubs um, around uh, the globe um, where. Kids, adults, uh, whoever will get together and they'll make music. They'll have a drum circle in some cities. Um, other cities, 
um, they do like a petting zoo, a musical instrument petting zoo, where they set up various musical instruments where kids can come in and actually uh, experience all of these different instruments that they may just hear about normally, you know, or in casual conversation, or they just may just see it um, by Googling something. But here, you're seeing all this stuff out, out front. So all of those various different forms, um, concerts, um, seminars, you name it, uh, anything that's involved in making music uh, happens on that day. Uh, and they just added uh, a Make Music Day into, in the wintertime. And that normally takes place uh, in January. It normally takes place in January, around the 21st, 22nd. January so now two times a day two times a year excuse me you're actually doing that um, it's, it's a great idea and, uh, more communities if your community um, is not set up for making make music day or um, you want to know more information about it definitely go to the make music day uh, dot org website um, and get engaged follow see what's going on awesome. Awesome. so uh, what vital part do you play in that Great, so um, I've been a NAM member um, since I've been here at Fox. Uh, I'm also uh, part of what they call the NAM YP, NAM uh, Young young Persons. Uh, and and kind of what that entails is, you know, those that are uh, under under the age of, I think they, under the age of 40, um, they partner uh, with an older, more seasoned member of NAM, uh, just kind of learning the music uh, retail business, and just kind of learning that aspect of it. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Artistry during the pandemic and bringing music to others. So y'all heard that. I hope you did. Before we do that one, I, so here's a part about uh, Charles that didn't say. He is a phenomenal daughter and she is, she is, I mean, I see two videos of her. I just, <laughs> wish I had that, that tool right then. And she's got a cooking show. Oh, she's working on, right? So, she's with she's that being that. said, has she uh, um, participated in NAM at this point yet? Uh, so, I actually took my daughter to NAM last year. Right. I took my daughter and my wife to NAM. And uh, if I could have recorded, I wish I did, um, the day, uh, whenever you go to the NAM show, if any. And if you guys out there have ever heard of that or never been, you need to go at least one time in your life. I promise you it will change your whole perspective um, on what you think you know about music and, and what's out there and what's available and, and, and your limitations. It will, it will definitely open your mind. And to see my daughter's face the first time we walked into this, you know, 500,000 square foot plus auditorium that was just one area of this show where every music merchant from here to you know China to Africa to India all these music merchants come together in order to show what they are currently selling what they're making uh, and some new product that they actually have out um, so it's, it's a grand exposure for uh, folks like us here at Fox Music House where we're retailers and always looking for uh, ways and products to help uh, invest into our customers in order for them to uh, make music better. And just see her the look on her face when she saw all of this. And I was telling her about it initially. But you know, she's five and her, uh, her understanding of what big is, <laughs> is a little different. <laughs> her uh, perspective of five year old is a little different. Um, but when she actually got to see this, it was more than she had ever imagined and dreamed of. And for a five-year-old to experience that and what I've already exposed her to as far as music right. is concerned and the arts, um, to see this on this scale and like, oh, daddy, daddy's actually doing stuff on this level. Like, wow, like, that's, that's amazing. And for her to be able to kind of meet different folks. Uh, she met uh, one of the guys from Boys to Men <laughs> while we were out there. Nice. Um, so it was cool, cool experience and um, for her, um, she talks about going back every year. <laughs> Remember, she's five. She wants to go back every year. And then you have to understand that every kind of person who does music, in music, who uses music, who creates music, who's a manufacturer, is that name. 
And this, I think, a week long or two. It's it's about it's about a week long. It's a week long. So you will get. So when you think you know music, go to them. You'll find out different. Mm-hmm. So we're gonna jump right into our next question, which is a which is about topic. artistry during the pandemic. Right. Exactly. So artistry during the pandemic and bringing music to others. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. You know um, what we have found, and what I have found, let's say on a personal level, is um, I really enjoyed how a lot of artists are being stretched. Right. A lot of artists are being stretched. Um, as far as uh, there's a uh, <clears throat> there's, there's a story, there's a story in the Bible, in Luke chapter five, and uh, Jesus was talking to the disciples, and he was telling Peter about. Uh, putting their nets down. He said, don't wash your nets out. Put your nets down. One thing I have found uh, that um, the seeds that we're building today or the nets that we're building today, we may not have to drop them. Now, the fish may not be there for us to catch, but um, at some point, what the artists have been doing and how they're being stretched, they're going to have to use those tools and utilize those tools at some point. Right. In time, and I, I, I've, I've just been pleased to see how different folks in music have just been going outside of their comfort zone. Folks that are normally used to just doing live performance, they're doing some more recorded performances, some doing some other things, obviously from the confines of their house or whatever the case may be. Um, or those that have only been confined to the studio aspect right. have now found um, new ways to try to expand um, performance-wise. It's beautiful. I love it. I love it. And it, tough times really kind of really pull that kind of stuff out of us. And as musicians, uh, you well understand um, some of the best things that we write or we produce or come out of us come out of a, a, a tough place a lot of times. And that is so true. Yeah, they come out of a tough place. Um, but it makes us better and we learn more from what we come out of. Right. Uh, because because of those experiences. Absolutely. Real quick, um, now he said it stretches you, so I can I can relate because um, when you it's like you're in the corner, you had nowhere to go, you had to push out no matter what. So in, in that fashion, how does that how how has that affected uh, you as an artist? Yeah. So for me as an artist, I really started to really start working a lot more on my my personal stuff. You know, I've been playing music all my life, and I've always been accompanying folks. Right. I've always been, you know, just kind of in the background, to the side, you know, that type of that type of deal. Um, but I've really found my niche, or really found my voice during all of this, and find, you know, what I want to say and how I want to say it. Um, and that's that's tough for a lot of artists. Mm-hmm. That's tough for a lot of artists. Um, we know how to say what somebody else has said. Um, we know how to do that. I know how to sing Stevie Wonder. I can do that. Right. You know, I didn't live through the experience that he lived through in order to produce that song, but I can sing it. Right. Um, but there are songs um, that no one else can identify with, like I can. There's there are songs that you you create that I can't identify with. Right. I mean, I can understand it, but I can't identify with it because uh, your experience helped shape that. And so what I found as an artist is um, finding, um, like I said, my sound, finding exactly what I want to say and how I want to say it, how I want to present it, and being comfortable in that fact, uh, being comfortable and solid that, hey, everybody might not like how it sounds, everybody might not understand it right. but this is me and there is a segment of people that it's meant for right. and you said something that was i can relate to um how important is it to find your sound as a, as a musician uh extremely important uh you know no matter what capacity we're walking in and in it relates to music right. whether it's in the production capacity or you know, whatever the case might be. Um, to be able to find our sound is to be able to 
add on to that, that harmony. Right. It, it, there's a harmony there, um, and no matter any song that's, that that comes along, or any song that is sung or produced, or whatever the case might be, and being able to find my sound is how I can help contribute to that harmony. So, can you talk about ways to engage the community sure. with the arts? Sure, especially now and yes. everything that we're going on. Um, folks, um, entities, um, institutions have had to become more creative as far as engaging. But I think now it's more, um, it's easier to do now uh, to engage folks um, from that perspective because uh, you look at everything that is set up, look at everything that's set up right now. And now everyone um, has access to the internet and different things of that nature. So now I would say uh, find local message boards, um, join local groups on Facebook um, to reach out to other like-minded individuals mm -hmm. um, to, really, to really see and to really understand um, what else is available out there, what, what, el what other folks are doing. And I think that's one way to engage, find out what else is going on in your community. Who else may have the same idea that you have, but may not be able to conceptualize it the way that, the, the way that you can. Um, you know, that harmony, your voice, finding where it fits. Um, and I think collaboration is gonna be vitally important going forward. Um, that's one way. The other way is to um, not be afraid, not be afraid of new ideas. Mm -hmm. Not be afraid of new ideas. Uh, when it comes to music, uh, new ideas sometimes are frowned upon because it doesn't fit a certain mold or it doesn't fit a certain, uh, you know, form. Right. Um, the norm that's, that's there. Right, exactly. Like, you know, we've done it this way for however long. Um, we Don't pull out the box. Though. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, right. You know, we, we, we've always done this, this type of deal here. We've always done that. Um, but it's always been in that in that manner. But I think nowadays folks are looking for new, fresh ideas, and they and they are ready to gravitate toward that kind of stuff. And um, so, don't be afraid to throw a new idea out there to try something new. You just never know right. um, what it's going to spark. Um, on 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 the other end, um, also, um, I would say engage with uh, local arts organizations um, because. They have been, they've been hurt very, very badly by the pandemic and everything that's been going on. Right? Whether it's from a funding perspective, or whether it's from uh, viewership, um, or you know, patron, uh, patrons um, really participating in the the things that they're putting on. Right. So you know, when you see these folks coming back um, and starting to put productions on and starting to present different things, um, the local artists need your support. So definitely, you know, go out and support, support the poetry reading, support um, the concerts, support whatever you can do. Um, I know right now, um, just check out and look. Different folks are doing live streams right now. Right. Look and see who's doing the live streams. Um, check it in, check in on it, and, and support, and support that as well. And, and that's very important because uh, our nine to five is us going out and doing stuff. Mm -hmm. I, I nine to five is not sitting back at home relaxing. In other words, if we don't go out, we will get paid. So when y'all see us online streaming, uh, please support us. Uh, Absolutely. Um, drop, Absolutely. I heard somebody say, if a thousand people dropped a dollar, then you just have me out. So think about that, you know, as we go into this, uh, as we go on through this, uh, it's, you know, I heard people say um, unusual times now. It's about to be the normal times, mm -hmm. so so we have to, you know, grasp that concept and and, and, and like like uh, Mr. Charles said, that circle of a community. We, we we have to do that. It's it's very important. It's very vital. Um, in that, so what's what's in the future for uh, Charles Miller? Man. Yeah, when is that new music gonna come out? Yeah, it's yeah. it's coming. <laughs> it's, it's it's coming. I actually started working on on a single. Um, started working on a single about two weeks ago. Nice. Um, so um, look for that this fall. So that's going to be coming this fall. Got a new single coming. 
Um, so there are a lot of a lot of different things as far as music is concerned. Right. That's really coming up that I was afraid to kind of stretch out on for a lot of different various reasons. But um, the last few months have really kind of just made the jump, huh? It it it, it reset the table. Yeah. For a lot of artists, and for me, it reset my mindset. Right. And so now, um, I don't have the inhibitions or the fears of what I had previously. Um, and just you know, just go ahead and, and say what I have to say. And say what's been given to me. Right, right. Because you've been pushed. Yeah. So it's been, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, and well, everybody's yeah. story is important. Yeah. So it's oh. time for Charles Miller's story. Right. And, and like we said before, it's amazing. It's 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 horrible. And it's hardship that people are leaving their lives at this moment. But for artists like us. It's, it's it's the time for for you know, quote unquote, our, 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 our light to shine, so to speak. And you heard this child say that he feared, but he jumped. So now the fall, we're gonna hold him to it. The fall, <laughs> when this fall start, uh, October, November, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. But remember, y'all, he said it then. Yeah, so we hold them to it. We have it on camera. That's right. That's right. right. That's right. <laughs> when you find your purpose, or you find that niche. Uh, it's not easy. I'm not gonna say that be, be, because you have to be uncomfortable. You put in a comfortable position to be comfortable. So he just showed you, or he's showing you. Um, uh, any questions? Uh, I can't think of any. Good. So we're in this amazing place. Y'all can see his pianos and guitars and you name it because we're in a music store. <laughs> the music master that, that has really impressed me. Um, I was impressed with uh, Charles when he played a Stevie, a Stevie Wonder song. And I say that because people who love Stevie Wonder understand how complex, uh, complex Stevie Wonder can be. Absolutely. So if you can play it, singing is one thing, but when you can play it to me, that's something totally different. <laughs> that's, that's, that's a whole nother level. Um, we definitely enjoy uh, just spend time talking with you, uh, just pick your brain. Um, I do want to deep dive more, but I want to put it all in one segment and one show. We thank y'all for uh, tuning in.